Hello, welcome to video 4. What is the actor component projectile movement? I've gone ahead and created a quick little example here. Nothing is actually set up. We're going to go ahead and set it up and see how everything works. So, to start with, I have basically a default actor here. It has a default scene root. We're going to add a cube, which it will be using as our projectile. And then we're going to add a projectile movement to it. Now, projectile movement has a few different settings. A lot of them don't work together, and a lot of them require certain things to be set up a certain way. So we're going to try to cover them as best as possible, and let's see if we can remember the right combinations. It is honestly a giant pain in the butt, and it probably should be split out to different components. So here's our default. We have our default scene root. We have our cube, and we have our projectile movement. Now, the parameters that I have collapsed, variable, sockets, planar movement, movement component, tags, and activation, these are all not specific to the projectile movement. These are specific to things like the actor component and the movement component, and we will not be covering them here. Things that are specific are the events, velocity, homing, projectile simulation, projectile bounces, and then projectile itself. So let's go ahead and get started. If we run it just like it is now, you're simply going to see it drop straight down and nothing's going to happen. Now there's a few reasons for that. One, by default, it's not really set to go anywhere. We also have gravity scale turned on by default, so that's why it's dropping down. But if you noticed, it did not get stopped by the floor. The floor uses collisions. Bouncing is going to use collisions. By default, this isn't using collisions or physics. It's using basically fake physics. So that is why it does not stop. Our gravity is basically saying pull it down, and there's nothing physically stopping it. One of the primary reasons is when this thing is activated, the movement component automatically attaches itself to the default scene root. It's going to be your root object. Our default scene root does not have any collision or physics enabled on it. Now when it moves this, everything else attached to it moves along with it independently and is moved, it's, it's teleported. It's not actually moved in terms of physics, it's just put into position. So keep that in mind. If you need something to have physics as your projectile, that item needs to be the root, and we're going to show that here in a bit. So to cover the basics of how it works. Initial speed, max speed, and velocity are what controls the movement of it. They do not work really together. They're going to work separately, and one or the other is going to work. By default, with the initial speed and max speed at zero, it uses the velocity to determine the speed. For this example, we're going to need to shut off projectile gravity scale so it doesn't move anywhere. If we were to hit play, you'll notice it's going to sit here. Now, technically, it's not sitting here. If we were to look at it close enough, you can actually see it is moving forward slowly. By default, it's moving along the x one unit every second. So if we were to change our velocity to, let's say, let's go 300 and hit play, now you can see it actually moving. And we're firing it straight. It's firing along the X. If we wanted it to go up, well, we could do 0 on the X, and let's go 200 on the Z. And now it's going to go up. And of course, the opposites will work. If we did negative 200, we basically get our fake gravity, and it's going to go down 200 units per second. So for this example, let's go ahead and back this back out. Let's do... 200 on the X and let's go ahead and turn gravity back on Let's put gravity a little bit lower. Let's put it something like 0.3 and we'll watch it go forward With a gravity of 0.3 We'll hit play again and you'll watch it drop forward So that's how we give it a little bit of a go. That's our velocity now if we wanted it to go a little bit differently And we want to use speeds we'd set our initial speed and max speed If we set our initial speed to 200 and we left x at 200, we're actually going to see no difference. 
it's not multiplying the velocity by the initial speed. It's basically using the velocity to determine which plane, x, y, or z. So in this case, we're told it to go on x. We did it 1. We're going to get the same result as 200. If you are using speed, basically velocity becomes a direction, and it's going to be ignored except if it's a number or not. Negative is going to go backwards. Positive is going to go forward. In this case, let's bump our initial speed up to, let's say, 350, and try to get it closer to moving forward. There we go. And we'll give it a little less gravity, just to give it a little bit of a downforce, and we'll watch it go. There we go. Now you notice it isn't colliding with anything. It's not colliding because there's no physics enabled. We'll cover that shortly. Now our next option is rotation follows velocity. Well, technically max speed. Max speed is going to be the maximum speed that it is allowed to run. We may set our initial speed at a large number. I don't know. I think it's 100,000. But let's say our max speed is set back down to 350. If we hit play, it's going to immediately hit our 100,000, which is why you see it jump right to the end point. And after that initial tick of 100,000, it's going to kick in with our max speed of 350 and immediately slow down to 350. If we were to change our initial speed back down to 350, you'll notice a much smoother performing projectile. So keep that in mind. You will still get your initial speed, but your max speed itself is going to be determining after that the maximum speed. So if something was going to continue on without any form of limiting to its speed, any form of friction, the max speed and is basically going to be the speed it will continue at. Initial velocity in local space basically is this velocity that it's firing in, local space or in world space. By default, it's local, and that's more than likely what you're going to want. And we already said gra projected gravity scale. Basically, zero is no gravity, and larger numbers is more gravity. Now our other options. Bounces requires physics, and projectile simulation is physics, so we're going to ignore those for now. We're going to go with homing. Homing's a bit of a pain in the butt. Now if you turn on homing projectile, and you, we go ahead and we hit play, well, nothing really different is going to happen. You need to set the projectile that you're homing to in code itself. And what, you're, what you use is the homing target component. Homing target component takes the projectile movement actor as the target and then a scene root as the homing target component. What I'm doing in this case is I have a blueprint I created that simply is a sphere. If we move this out of the way you can see it. And all I'm doing is getting that sphere, getting the scene root, and setting that as the target. Now you figure if we hit play it would work fine. Well, unfortunately, no, it's still not working right. There's a few things. First of all, let's shut off gravity so we know that's not an issue. And we'll hit play, and we'll find it's just going to keep going straight. Next thing, we have our homing acceleration magnitude. Now, homing acceleration magnitude and max speed go together when we're using homing. It's really weird, but that's how it works. Basically, if we set, let's say, our magnitude to 100, and our max, sorry, our homing acceleration magnitude to 100, and our max speed to 350, when we hit play, it's going to basically slowly accelerate until it gets to the max speed. And you also notice it's now actually trying to get to our target because we have a little bit of a magnitude there, but it still can't quite get to it. Why is that? Well, it's really annoying, but our velocity down here, it's actually affecting it. It's adding one on the x while it's trying to home. You need to set your velocity to zero on all three, x, y, and z, if you're going to use homing. Now if we hit play, now you're going to notice it's going to go straight to our sphere. You'll notice a little bit of a warm up when we hit play, slow, and then it gets to max speed and it goes. That warm up is our magnitude. If we set it to let's say 5,000, well let's go 50,000, when we hit play, you'll notice it's smooth now. Now the smoothness is actually related to the max speed. Basically we're accelerating faster than our max speed, so we're basically going 350 off the bat. 
we set it to 350 and we went ahead and hit play you'll notice a nice smooth transition the whole way you'll notice an issue where it goes through it when it gets to the end it's trying to use the magnitude to determine what should happen now the problem here is our physics issue it's trying to get to it's trying to move the default scene root which doesn't have a collision to our target which technically does have collision but we're moving it we're teleporting it because our default scene root has no collision so how would you go around that well let's delete our movement and delete our scene root well, actually we got to delete our cube and then delete, and then we got to go to cube it's slightly annoying and then we got to set our cube as our scene root and now we have our cube as our scene root then we can go back to our projectile movement and we can go ahead and set projectile movement back here go back to projectile movement we want to make sure our velocity is set back to zero homing projectile well i like 350 we'll go 350 set 350 for our max speed let's go ahead and do zero for gravity and then let's see what happens now if we hit play it should go right to our target and it'll actually stop because we now have working collision on the projectile movement so that's something to keep in mind it's actually going to play into a few more things here so if you noticed when it went after our round circle it's keeping the same orientation it's still along the x that our cube is straight even though we went at an angle like this so you'd, you would actually expect our projectile to rotate and go towards our target well that is what the rotation follows velocity is for if we click on this and we run it you'll notice it's now going to rotate to get to the correct rotation as we move it if we were for example to not use homing anymore and let's say we want to move 350 on the x which is what we'll set here for 350 and we give it a little bit of gravity let's say 0.4 you're going to notice our projectile now angles down and stops Bloop, just like that now the reason it stops is because again we now have our cube as our primary and our cube has collision on it and it's going to stop properly so what other options do we have here now we have our bounces and our projectile simulation projectile simulation is basically how often does it simulate our projectile for movement for collision and things like that by default you're good to go you don't really need to change anything but if you have a fast moving projectile you may need to force sub stepping this will give you better continuous collision detection if you have a slower moving object well there's no real reason to check every 0 0.05 seconds bump it up to half a second if it's super slow if you need it to actually check more often go ahead and move your simulation iterations up now sub stepping costs more performance simulation iterations cost more performance simulation time step lowers the cost of performance and gives you better performance if you make this a higher number so keep that in mind now if the max simulation time step is larger than the minimum frame rate for example your frame rate is too low and your simulation time is too too low as well you're going to have an issue by default there's nothing wrong with the default settings leave them alone unless you find you have an issue especially with fast projectiles our last section projectile bounces let's go ahead and turn this on see what happens and that's it you can actually see we have a bouncing cube which is having some severe issues there we can go ahead and run that again and you notice it's having issues because of friction and it being a angled cube our settings are should bounce whether it should bounce or not if it's off it's going to simply stop it's not going to use bounciness it's going to stop once we turn this on we have access to the other options bounce angle affects the friction the angle at which it bounces determines how much friction is applied the more smoother the angle more friction is going to be applied as you're getting more contact surface 
bounciness. How much does it bounce? Zero is no bounce. We'll set it to zero and run it, and you'll notice we have no bounce. It's basically going to stop and slide. If you set this to 1, you get actually the fun stuff. You get zero reduction in speed. It's going to take the same amount of speed that came in and continue on. And in this case, it would bounce forever. By default, it's 0 0.6, which is roughly realistic to plastic, uh, rubber. Friction is how much friction there is. The higher the friction number, say 1, the more friction there is and the less it's going to bounce. The lower the friction, the more it's going to bounce because it's going to have less resistance. You can leave it at the default of 0.2 or play with it. Bounce velocity stops simulating threshold. Basically, you can leave this at default, but if you're finding issues with it continually triggering the bouncing, you can go ahead and lower this number. Now, we have two other things here, on projectile bounce and on projectile stop. And these are just events that call back whenever it bounces or it stops. If we hook these up and we run it, we're going to see notes that say bounce in the top left every time it bounces. And then one that says stop once it actually comes to a stop. Now you notice here, it's having kind of an issue. It's having issues with bouncing and whoops. It's having issues with bouncing because we're not using physics. That's one thing to keep in mind. If you're going to use bounce, turn on simulate physics on the actual item itself, and it's going to start reacting appropriately. As you notice there, it actually landed and stopped and felt real. Before, when we weren't simulating physics, we were just faking it, and as you can see, you kind of have some issues. Whereas if we turned on physics and we simulated it, you'll notice it's actually running fine. One issue with that, when you're using physics, you're going to notice your projectile bounce and stop does not work anymore. Bounciness really does not work properly when you have physics enabled. As you can see here, when you have physics enabled, on the item itself, you get access to the physics material, which is hiding in here somewhere. And the physics material gives you the ability to... Physics material, here we go. And that gives you the ability to set the bounciness and things like that. So that's something to keep in mind. Physics on your item are physics. Physics in here should bounce. Simulation, homing projectile, things like that are fake physics. Projectile gravity scale, fake physics. This projectile is intended to simulate a projectile. A grenade, um, a grenade would be hard, but let's say it's a missile you fire, or a bullet out of a gun, or you're firing a shell out of a cannon, something like that, where it's very simple and you just want to fire, forget, and let things happen. And then you can call the projectile bounce and stop once it bounces or stops. So that's going to wrap this up. That is what the projectile movement actor component is. It's a simple way to add projectile movement to an actor very simply without having to do any code. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.